Alright guys, what I'm going to show you how to do today is we're going to do an introduction to some basic relief wood carving. Alright, so a couple things you're going to need. Now I'm going to be using a sample piece of wood. You guys are going to have a much bigger piece. But this is the little sample piece I'm going to carve right here. If you can see the little thing I've got on it right there. I've already drawn a very simple overlapping shape. I'm going to show you how to do some basic carving uh, techniques on that. You need a bench hook, which is these pieces of wood that I've made that are, they kind of hook onto the table like that. So that way you have a free hand, you can push against it, and you push your wood right there, and then you can carve against it. You're also gonna need some wood carving tools, you get some gouges, and it's called a gouge because it's shaped like a little U. I don't know if you can see that real well. See how it's kind of U-shaped right there? And then here's one that is more, put them together so you can see. See how one is way more intense than the other? That's called sweep, the amount of curve. And then, my favorite, which you'll use this more than anything else, one of these thick-handled number five exacto knives. Got a brand new blade in it, and I suggest using a brand new blade so you can make it nice and fast. A dull blade will cut you faster than a sharp blade. Does anybody know why? Because when you have a dull blade, you have to push harder, and you'll jump out, and then you're more likely to make a mistake. All right, so that being said, I've drawn my design out, so I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing here better. Right on top of it there, see if I can do this without being in my way. All right, so now the first thing you're going to do is what I call skewing the edges. And they make a chisel called a skew, but it's basically an X-Acto knife, and it's a big fat X-Acto knife. And I like these because they're razor, razor sharp. So first thing you're going to do is you outline everything with your X-Acto knife. So see how I'm kind of digging around? And you're kind of creating what it's like a little trench around all your lines. All right, I'm just pulling the exact knife. If you want it to go deeper, go a second pass. Now, one of the first rules of cutting is never cut towards yourself. I don't know what you're thinking. How do you do that? What you're talking about is this. See my thumb? If I start cutting right here and I slip, I'm going to go right across my thumb. So that's part of why this is here. Now, I do have to hold it. So my thumb, is see how it's way over here out of the way? So if I do slip like that, I didn't hit my thumb. So turn your wood however you need to. You guys can see that right there. All right, and then change the angle. I'm just working my way around. I'm cutting all the edges. Now, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to go around and get this last one. All right, so now I've skewed my edges, and so now what I need to do is carve them out. And so there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to use this shallow gouge right here. Let's see if I can focus on that. There you go. All right, and what I'm going to do is carve right towards it. Let me get in focus. All right, see that right there? I'm going to carve right towards my line and see how that chip, and by, by the fact that I've already cut, it'll just pop out. See how those chips just come right out, and it starts to raise that surface. And I just keep going, I'm stepping farther back, going towards that line. Now, when those chips start cu stop coming out, what does that mean? It means I need to cut some more. So be careful ripping them out because sometimes they can rip too much. So I like to just cut it again or skew it again. And then repeat. And so I go a little bit deeper every time. And it slowly starts to reveal paint. Start to reveal the shape. See that little edge coming up? And you just keep doing that all the way around. Let's do some more here. I can tell you right now that was perfect, so I'm gonna skew it again. And what I'm like working on first is the background. I think it's important to get rid of the background first. For one, it's good practice, and if you're going to mess up, you can cover up the background stuff easily. See how that's starting to take shape right there? All right, now cut this little guy out. There you go. I see how that's already about an eighth inch deep. Now I want this one to cut a little bit under that one, so I'm going to show you a different technique now. I'm going to use the exacto knife itself and create a little edge. So ready? Now I'm left handed so I'm going to hold it in my left hand. I'm going to put the blade right under the edge, that corner, 
I'm going to kind of push it. So I just peeled that little thing out right there. And so I kind of made that nice little indention. I can see that well at all. I'm going to skew it again. And that way it's going to look like it underlaps the piece beside it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of so I'm pushing with this finger right here. I'm pushing against the base of the knife and pulling it right out. All right, I'm going to do it again right there. So it's starting to take shape. You guys can see that. This camera's letting me see it good or not. All right, let's do a little more. Work my way around. Here you go, there's the next one. I've already cut this one. So I kind of overlap my cuts a little bit. Now see I'm going sideways. I need to move my camera. I just readjusted my wood so I'm brushing my camera to match it. And so I've got both hands on the knife that way and it's banging against my bench hook. Now these aren't coming out easy so I'm going to cut them out. If you chip them out you can rip a big chunk out of your project. So you want to be careful with that. There you go. Pop right out. Go at it again. This light's weird. And that's basically what you do. I think you guys get the picture. So you start dropping down the background to get it. There you go.